there, community live from Norway, as you can see, we are right over there. And I am Haley Ramson coming at you with today's story. Ernest Solberg, Norway's conservative prime minister, is nothing if not ambitious. After defeating her popular social democratic rival, Jens Stoltenberg, in the general election in September, she beat the odds to cobble together a minority coalition at the end of that month. On November 15th, she successfully negotiated an agreement on the budget for 2014. Now, she says she wants to wean Norway off of its dependence on oil income and ease it towards a more balanced economy in which budget deficits are not plugged by the wealth coming from the North Sea. This will not be an easy task, however. The gap between Ms. Solberg's ambitions and actions was highlighted in the budget deal, which saw her depend more on the country's oil funds than originally projected, an extra 3.9 billion kroner, or $640 million. Feisty rhetoric aside, Iron Emma, as they call her, is in a fragile position. Her intention to form a four-party major alliance was thwarted when the Christian Democrats and the Liberals hesitated at a coalition with her far-right partner, the Progress Party. The two small centrist parties did not or did support her bid for prime minister in September to keep the Social Democrats from power. But their informal alliance came under attention in recent weeks as the two bigger and the two smaller parties tried to hammer out a budget. Negotiations stammered along for days and almost warped before the government finally agreed to fund some of their centrist allies' pet projects, including an improved rail network and increased foreign aid. Ms. Solberg justified this with the claim that it was essential to use oil income on education and infrastructure to strengthen an economy that is struggling under slow growth, increased costs, and sluggish productivity. She blamed these troubles on her predecessor, saying his management of Norway's oil wealth had failed. Norway limits the amount it removes for everyday spending from its $800 billion independent wealth fund to 4% in any one year. But although Ms. Solberg's government reserved the previous government's plan to set the cap at 2.9% for 2014, explosive growth in the overall value of the fund since then has given her an additional bonus. Last month, Oystein Olsen, the governor of the central bank, said that even a 3% drawdown implied an, ex an expansionary impulse to the economy. And on November 19th, the OECD, a Paris-based Paris think tank, urged the government to refrain from dipping too deeply into the national piggy bank because of the risk that the economy would overheat. Such worries are reflected in how the Norwegian krone has been faring in the money market. Long gone seem the days during the financial crisis when the krone was regarded as a safe haven currency. The country's weak economic rudiments are the main reason for the krone's fall, but there is growing concern that Norway could experience a big property crash soon. Property prices, particularly in Oslo and Chichi ski resorts, have risen rapidly in the last decade. Peter Hermanrud, chief strategist at Swede Bank First Securities, told a conference in Oslo recently that the property bubble could soon burst and that the government's most likely reply would be to cut interest rates and increase its spending from the oil fund, exactly the opposite of Ms. Solberg's stated ambition. It's getting tough over here in Norway. It'd be interesting to see how they handle the situation. That's all for me today. Thank you, and back to you guys in the studio.